How's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can cache data in Python using a very convenient package, which one of you actually recommended to me in a previous video where we did this all manually. So what we're going to be doing is making an API request. And instead of fetching that data over and over and over, we're going to cache it temporarily so that we can provide a limit. So the user doesn't continuously waste our resources to get information that doesn't have to be updated so often. And this can also be good if you're testing your program and you don't want to waste your API requests. So for this example, we're going to create a program that fetches data from an API. And in this case, it's going to be an anime quote API. So we're going to get some quotes back and we're not going to get new quotes after the initial request because we're going to cache the data so that the next time we try to get quotes, it's going to load immediately from the cache. So the first thing we're going to do is type in pip install requests cache. And this is the package that we will be using. Once we have that installed, we're also going to import from typing the final type from data classes. We're going to import data class and from requests.cache or underscore cache, we're going to import the cached session. Now, first of all, we need to use the URL, which is going to be of type final because I want to declare it as a constant. And that's going to equal the following link. And I'm going to include this link in the description box of this video in case you want to use it as well. Otherwise, feel more than free to type this out by hand. But this is where we will get the data from. Then we need to create a session and the session is going to equal a cached session. And here we need to provide a location of where to cache the data. So here we'll type in cache name and I want to create a folder called cache and the file name is going to be anime underscore cache. And by default, it's going to cache the data indefinitely. So it's never going to request for new data, but we can provide an optional parameter called expire after. And here you can specify how many seconds you want this to last. So if you type in 600, it's going to last for 10 minutes, which means if the user tries to make a request 10 minutes from now, it's going to retrieve new data from the API. But everything within this 600 second time frame is going to be using the data from the cache. So already you might have some things in mind that don't have to be updated so frequently, but you do want to get a response for the user when they tap on some button. Also, I want to show you what's inside this link. So if you tap on this or you paste it in your browser, you're going to get a response such as this one. So it's going to contain the anime, the character, and the quote. So this is the model that we need to follow. And the reason I show you that now is because we're going to create a data class and the data class is going to be called quote. And we're going to have anime of type string, which is initially set to none. We're going to have a character of type string, which is initially set to none. And finally, we're going to have a quote of type string, which is also initially set to none. Next, we need to create a function that retrieves the data. So here we'll type in def get response. And the response is going to be a lot like from the requests module. So the response will equal session dot get, and you want to pass in the URL. So usually you would put requests dot get, but here you can just put session dot get and you can treat it the same way. Then what we want to try to do is try to get the JSON back. So JSON of type dictionary is going to equal the response dot JSON. And if that goes good, we can unpack the data from that JSON. So we can type in quote is equal to quote. And here we'll just use the unpacking double bang operator and pass in the JSON. So that's going to unpack all the fields and place it into the data class. Then of course you can use the data however you like. I'm just going to format it like this. So the quote dot quote followed by the quote character and the quote anime. And of course, if there's an exception, we're just going to handle it by saying this is what happened. We have the error message and the status code. So we can get a quick glimpse of what went wrong. But with all that being done, we can now create our if name is equal to main check and get that response to see what we get back. Now, if we run it, it's going to take a couple seconds to make the request, but we are going to get the data back. If we run this again, the request is going to be instant because we are now using the cache and not actually making a request to the API. Also, if you open your folder, you'll notice that you'll now have a folder called cache, which is going to hold the data in a SQLite format. 
So no matter how many times we run this, it's always going to load instantly for the next 600 seconds because we are using the cached information. And maybe for a quote generator, this isn't the best idea because you want to generate new quotes, of course. But if you have a lot of posts you are retrieving, let's say maybe from a news app, you don't need the user to make a new request every three seconds. News articles just do not update that fast. So maybe you can have a five minute timeout or a 10 minute timeout because API calls are expensive. So keeping them in the cache for the user or for yourself so that you can play around with your script without wasting all those API calls might be the best solution. And if you remove this, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to cache it forever, which means it's never going to search for new information. So you might want that, you might not want that, you might want to change those times. That's all up to you. I am going to be leaving a link to the documentation in the description box down below, because there are a lot of other fields that you can use with this session. But I just wanted to show you a quick way to get started with it, because I think this is really cool how easy it is to use. And I find it very useful already. So do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this. Otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.